Hey, City Center Baptist Church family. It's Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters. Digging deeper question number six asks, in Mark 6, 51 to 52, why does Mark expose the disciples' lack of understanding and hard-heartedness with regard to the loaves? How are the miracles of the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus' walking on water related? What was the lesson of the loaves that they were failing to grasp? All four gospel writers related the story of Jesus' feeding of the 5,000, and three of them also included Jesus' walking on the water immediately after. These two stories about our Savior seem to have left an indelible impression on Jesus' followers. The feeding of the 5,000 with just five barley loaves and two fish from a young lad's lunch demonstrated that God's plans never lack his provision. Our meager resources grow exponentially when entrusted to Jesus. But as we turn to Jesus' walking on the water, we are once again confronted with the miraculous. This is where many skeptics bail on the gospel accounts. They are impressed with Jesus' character. They marvel at his teachings, but they roll their eyes at the accounts of his miracles. Impossible, implausible, fanciful, they shout. These were conjured up by the early church later to make him appear greater than he actually was. And it was a superstitious world back then. And people believed all kinds of nonsense in the pre-scientific world. But how can Jesus' miracles be separated from the totality of who he was? The people of the first century AD were not primitive, as history clearly shows. And they weren't looking for these demonstrations of divine power at first. But as Jesus displayed time and time again, he was certainly the Son of God. If Jesus was, in fact, the Son of God, wouldn't it be reasonable to expect the extraordinary from him? If he was the creator of all, as the scriptures assert, should we be surprised if he could walk on water? It all hinges on Jesus' identity. The truth is, the disciples persisted in their unbelief and hard-heartedness even after witnessing these miracles. They were having difficulty processing it, as we would have had, had we been present. They were still trying to figure out how Jesus had multiplied the loaves when he walked on the water. It wasn't until after Christ's resurrection, the greatest of all miracles, that all the pieces of the puzzle came together for them. They finally truly believed Jesus was the Son of God, the Lord of all, and they willingly gave the rest of their lives for him. And through the experiences of these first eyewitnesses, we too experience the Son of God today. Are you trusting him fully these stormy days? Are you looking for him to walk through the winds and waves to be with you in the midst of your uncertainty? Do you believe he can give you forgiveness, hope, peace, joy, comfort, provision, and abundant life? This has been Pastor Brad coming to you from DDQ headquarters.